So right now we'll be learning how to graph the sine and cosine parent function. Uh, in case you don't know, a parent function is kind of just the simplest uh, type of sine or cosine graph that we could do. Um, what you should have done in previous math classes is, or at least one of the things you should have done, is do transformations of a parabola. So the parent function of a parabola is if you have your coordinate axes, then it, the vertex of that parabola starts at 0, 0, which is the origin, and it kind of breaks up from there. And again, in previous math classes, you should have learned how to transform this. So shift it up, or shift it left, or shift it right, or dilate it, which is make it bigger or smaller, um, maybe reflect it. You should have learned all those different things. And in order to do that, you had to know where the parent function was. So if you don't remember it, that's totally fine. Um, maybe it's something you want to brush up on. Uh, but it's not necessary in order to graph sine and cosine transformations. Uh, it just helps you out a little bit. Uh, so again, let's go ahead and take a look at what those parent functions are. So let me get rid of that. Uh, first thing we're going to look at is the sine. And if you'll notice, I've put a couple of things up on here. Uh, I gave myself a very, very rough unit circle here. Um, gave myself a little chart. I gave myself the function and some coordinate axes so that we can go ahead and graph this once we figure it out. Uh, and the first thing that I need to do is I should remember what these coordinate points are. So if you remember, the unit circle has a radius of 1, which means in order to get to 0 degrees off here, uh, we need to go 1 to the right and 0 up or down. Up here, we're going 0 left or right and 1 up. Back here at 180 degrees, sorry, this one was 90 degrees. Over here at 180 degrees, we went 1 to the left, 0 up or down. And last but certainly not least, 270 degrees, you went 0 left or right and 1 down. And just for the heck of it, I'm going to go ahead and label this as 360 degrees as well. Uh, so the most basic way to graph something is plug and chug method. You're going to pick an x value, and you're going to plug in a y value, and then you're just going to go from there. So let's start by figuring out when x is 0 degrees. Let's figure out what y would be. Well, if we remember, sine, the sine of any angle, is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. And when we're on the unit circle, opposite equates to the y value. And again, when we're on the unit circle, your hypotenuse is 1. So really, when we're looking at an angle that's on the unit circle, sorry, a angle. Uh, any point that's on this unit circle here, uh, we're really just looking at the y-coordinate. So what is the y-coordinate at 0 degrees is essentially what the question is, and that's 0. And then we're just going to fill in a couple of different things here. So now 90 degrees, looking at the y-coordinate, is going to be 1. Looking at 180 degrees, the y-coordinate is 0. Down to 270 degrees, the y-coordinate is going to be negative 1. Going up to 360 degrees, the y-coordinate is 0. Now, if you remember, technically we could go on and keep figuring things out. If I decided to go to 450 degrees, well, that is coterminal to 90 degrees. So it would end up having the same y-value, which is 1. And then I could keep going if I really wanted to and hit up 540 and keep on keeping on in this whole shebang. But I'm going to go ahead and stop there because I feel like that's enough points to get our point across here. Um, now what I need to do is I need to figure out some sort of axis. So I need to label these guys. I'm just going to go ahead and say that this right here is going to be my 0 degrees. So my x-axis is degrees. My y-axis is going to be just numbers. So the value of the sine of 0 degrees or sine of 90. Um, and just to make it a nice big old graph, we're going to say 1 is all the way up here, which means negative 1 would be down here. Uh, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and switch colors just so it's a little bit easier to see. So here is my x-axis. See how straight I can make that line. Here is my y-axis, with this being one, negative 1, this being 1. So next, we need to set an axis over here. And we'll go ahead and say that every two tick marks is going to be 90 degrees. So one, two, here's, uh, oops, sorry. Another 90 degrees brings me up to 180 degrees. Another two brings me to 270 degrees. 
another two is 360 degrees, and this is just for us to get a feel for what's going to happen here. 450 degrees, and oh, I stopped at the perfect moment. Here's 450 degrees, sorry, 540 degrees. So now let's go ahead and plot these points. When x is 0 degrees, y is 0. So I can put a plot there. When x is 90 degrees, y is 1. When x is 180 degrees, y is 0. When x is 270, y is negative 1. 360 is 0. 450 is 1. And last but not least on our chart, 540 is 0. So you'll see there's kind of a pattern, and I'm willing to bet that if we were to continue this on forever, that pattern would continue, and if we were to go backwards, that pattern would continue as well. One thing I always tell my students to do is resist the urge to zip straight from one point to the next. You're going to get a zigzag pattern, which isn't what the sine curve is. The sine curve is a curve, so you're going to carefully kind of go up. It's almost like creating a roller coaster as you go through. You want to calmly connect these dots. So you're creating a nice big old crest, a nice big old trough. There we go. And just to make sure that we're accurate, let's go ahead and put a little arrow down there and a little arrow down there to say that it does go on forever and ever. So here is our very, very basic parent function. The midline of this graph is going to be on the x-axis. So if you don't know what the word midline or crest or trough or anything like that, make sure you watch the previous video about wave vocabulary. Uh, but the midline of this is going to be right there on the x-axis. And it turns out that sine, if we start at 0 degrees, so at the x-axis, it starts with a midline. And then it's going to go up to a crest, back down to the midline, and then to the trough and then back to the midline and it kind of creates this pattern midline crest midline trough midline crest midline trough and it'll continue that way until whenever we decide to stop and if we were to go backwards it would again continue that way just following the path backwards trough midline crest midline trough midline crest midline over and over and over so this is the parent function for a graph of sine and the real thing that I want to make sure that you guys get when you pull this away is it starts at the midline, then goes up to the crest, back to the midline, trough, back to the midline. So these five points are what I call the critical points on the graph. Um, right now, that really doesn't mean that much to you. But if and when you guys take calculus, critical points are exactly what they sound like, very critical. Um, and you'll find out that those are critical points in calculus as well. Um, so there's the most basic graph of sine, that's your parent function for sine, and again the thing to pull away is it starts at the midline, goes up to the crest, and then follows that pattern. Um, but it's not enough just to know sine, so let's take a look at the cosine. We're going to go a little bit quicker through that one. Um, so again, we'll go ahead and put in these, you know, 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, and 0, negative 1. So this time we're graphing cosine of x, which if you'll remember, according to Sokotoa, cosine is adjacent over the hypotenuse, which on the unit circle, that's going to be x over 1. So really, whenever you're on the unit circle, with you're looking at a point on the unit circle, your cosine value is just your x. So whenever we plug in an x to this equation here, looking at 0 degrees, when cosine of 0 degrees we're looking at an x value of 1. Going to 90, we've got a cosine of 0. And again, we're just following through just like we did. Cosine of 180 degrees is negative 1. Going out to 270, cosine of 270 is 0. 360, and this is where that plug and chug really gets annoying is going through and solving all these as you go through. And it really doesn't take that long once you catch on to the patterns, but it is still time consuming. So 540 is back here at negative 1. So some of you may notice that it is, again, a pattern. A pattern's emerging, and we're going to go ahead and set our axes just like we did before. 
and we're going to try and keep it as similar as possible to that sine graph so we can really tell the difference between them. So up 3 is going to be 1, down 3 is going to be negative 1, right here is 0 degrees, every 2 tick marks is going to be 90 degree increments, 1, 2, so right here is going to be 270, we've got three, oops, 360, let me erase that, 360 degrees, Ooh, keep skipping numbers here, 450 degrees, and last but not least, 540 degrees. So again, at zero degrees, this time we're starting at one. So whereas the graph of sine started at a midline, graph of cosine starting up here. At 90 degrees, we're down here at the x-axis, 180, or down here at negative 1, 270 brings us back to the x-axis, 360 back up here to the top, down here at 450 we're hitting the midline again, and at 540 we're down there at a trough. Just like the sine graph, this guy is going to continue on forever and ever, and we're also going to make sure that we resist that urge to zip straight from one point to the next. So keeping it loosey-goosey, making sure that we're creating a nice, gentle curve as we go through. And again, because the domain of this graph is from negative infinity to positive infinity, we're going to go ahead and put those arrows to make sure people know that it does continue on. So just like the last one, we keep that same pattern. But this time we're going to start up here at a crest. So crest, midline, oh, what is wrong with my spelling today? Midline, trough, midline, crest, midline, over and over and over and over all the way until we get to negative infinity and positive infinity. So continue off forever in that direction, and if we wanted to, we can continue off back in the other direction. So again, the main things to pull out is this one starts at the y-axis. It'll start at a crest, then go to a midline, and then continue on to the trough, and then come back to the crest. So these five points, again, are called critical points. And if you take a look at these, it actually constitutes one full period because you're taking half this crest, all the trough, and the other half of the crest, which makes sense that it would be at 360 because we went one circle around. As you go again, all those values start to repeat each other. This really is unraveling the unit circle as we go through. So again, the thing to point out is the graph of cosine is going to start at a crest the graph of sine is going to start at a midline, and they all follow that pattern as you go through. These are again the parent functions. In the next couple of videos, we'll be looking at different transformations you could be making towards them.